And welcome back to the Livingston Parish News Weekly Show, a podcast brought to you by the Livingston Parish News. My name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news, and this is now, as you mentioned before we got started, our fifth time sitting down. So if you'll introduce yourself, sir. I'm Gerard Landry, the mayor of Denham Springs. And we always appreciate you taking the time to come by. We've spent a lot of time talking about drainage. We finally kind of got a little bit off that subject last time. We talked about annexation, which was an interesting and fun conversation. I know a lot of people have questions about that. Going to start this one off talking a teensy-weensy bit about drainage because we have had some heavy rains. Expecting one more inch over the course of this week. But as you said, so far looking pretty good. Yeah, so I stay in touch with George. Uh, obviously, our street department uh, supervisor, George Lathers. And uh, through the whole the last two days, we haven't had any significant problems. So that's that's encouraging. Uh, Wesley Kinnerbrew with Gravity Drainage, we're all in this together. And uh, he is, a, you know, he said the same thing. You know, what the, the, the improvements that we are working on and the education of our citizens seems to be working. So we're, we're proud for that. But, so getting into the uh, sort of main crux of why we wanted to sit down, there's a lot of commercial construction going on, a lot of purchases, a lot of building, a lot of renovations, some new tenants. All sorts of interesting and fun things. So going to start off with uh, every, every month, the city council, as well as yourself, gets a report from uh, the permit director, Rick Foster, about what's going on around town. Right. There's a couple of, I guess you could say, off-menu items uh, that we're, I, I want to start off with, uh, and then we'll kind of roll into a few things uh, that he has on the list. So you discussed uh, three different things before you and I got started. First, uh, we'll go in reverse order. So first is the Hardee's near Bass Pro is now uh, moving into a different kind of restaurant. New tenant, tell us a little bit about that. So the new tenant is going to be Fiery Crab, and it's a nationwide chain. Uh, specializes, as I understand, mostly in boiled seafood. Interesting. So, uh, yeah, it's a natural for us when you come right down to it. So uh, they've announced that they're coming. We just found out the other day, and, uh, and we found out uh, about a week or two ago because there was a contractor working, and he didn't know for sure exactly who the tenant was, believe it or not. But the property management company is from Los Angeles. So uh, they didn't have a, somebody in town that we could call. But they've uh, since uh, put up a sign yesterday, so a fiery crab is coming. And we're excited. Very cool. Uh, moving up Range Avenue, uh, you know, the old Harriman's Florist location had been I don't want to call it derelict, but it pretty much was, you know, in very bad shape after the flood. Took That's a ton correct. of water. Uh, but it looks like a new tenant who has owned it for about a year and a half is finally moving forward. Tell us a little bit about that story. So uh, Doug and Charlotte Wax obviously carried on the family business when it started as Edries over on Centerville, and they moved it over to, uh, to Range next to Seal. And they uh, finally got into the retirement age and decided to take advantage of that and leased the building to Ricky Harriman's. And, of course, after the flood, uh, it was devastated, uh, like, like everything else in town. Uh, but now they have a, a purchaser, and they, these guys have actually closed the deal over a year, year and a half ago. Uh, it's just taken the new tenant, which is Discount Tire. Uh, it's taken them a while to get their stuff together. We've been working with them out of Phoenix, Arizona. Answer questions about water supply and drainage and, and uh, sewer issues, and we finally have them to a point now to where they're actually ready to come, drop off their plans to get a permit to actually start construction. We should see that hopefully in the next few weeks. Very good. Very good. And and the third one, for whatever reason, is slipping my mind. So it? the third one is going to be John Madden. That's and right. That's right. So John Madden owns Madden Construction, and him and his wife and his nephew, Will, came to our city council meeting last night to introduce themselves and talk about what it is they hope to do there. So these guys are from Minden, Louisiana. They have asphalt plants and concrete plants, I think 21 in total, between Louisiana. They have a secondary office in Longview, Texas. And they're working out of a cement plant that they own in a meet right now. And so when they found out about our, uh, the old um, uh, Mangel Concrete. There it is. And, uh, and the Holland family owned it before them. Uh, they found out it was on a market, came and looked at it, ended up buying it. Uh, well into the seven-figure range. And they bought it. And now they're going to make a lay-down yard and an office. They have a lot of work in South Louisiana. They're going to put office staff there. And it won't be a concrete plant. They're actually going to come in, and for the first two or three weeks, they're going to demo all the concrete that's there. They're going to bring a concrete crushing for, uh, machine in, crush it all up, spread it back out again, and it's going to be a lay-down yard. So it's going to be a place where they can lay down their equipment when they're in between jobs. Gotcha. And they have, like, say, four or five uh, concrete plants already in South Louisiana. So that uh, a development that's, you know, 
right now that that land has been unused for many years. Correct. And, you know, there had been a couple of, of bids for it, including Mr. Fred Banks. Uh, that did not go through. They moved locations. That was part of our annexation Correct. conversation last, uh, two weeks ago. Sure. So this is uh, finally found an owner and, and, and finally going to be put into commerce. Now, you said uh, maybe a little noisy at first because they're going to be changing it up. But for the most part, no concrete can, uh, manufacturer is going to happen it's, there. It, they, they, he pretty much assured us it's going to be an eight to five operation, and they won't be they won't be manufacturing concrete. So they're going to be neighbor friendly. And, gotcha. and the neighbors, some of the neighbor, neighbors were at the meeting last night, and they were ecstatic about it. So, that's, uh, so moving into the script, sure. <laughs> as you will. <laughs> okay. Now, you and I said, uh, well, you said, and and I agree because I I know there's a lot going on around town. We could spend hours talking about this. Obviously, we try to keep these things, you know, under 30. Uh, so that's not going to happen. But we're going to kind of roll through this in terms of a couple of things. First, I want to bring up uh, Lard Oil, uh, which is an Exxon property uh, on one Highway 190 or Florida Boulevard, uh, has that gas station next door to it. They're doing a small renovation uh, and expansion of their footprint there. Uh, but one of the things that the council and the city had done was extended uh, voted and approved an extension of his liquor license uh, for that particular building. So that that's kind of led you to believe that eventually they're going to renovate and and reopen that Exxon station on 190, correct? Exactly right. And they've they've been a little distracted, let's say, since the flood because I've also acquired another Ooh. distributor in the area, and so they've had to to work through that scenario. Uh, but Johnny Malazio uh, has assured me that they have every intention of trying to reopen that facility. It may not be a complete and total remodel, but it's definitely going to be an upgrade. It definitely needs to be repaired since the flood. And uh, so we're excited so we can finally have an Exxon uh, station in town. So uh, that, that'll be coming uh, hopefully at some point. Obviously, there's no real timeline for it, but they have at least made steps to say that they're committed to That's that. correct. Something interesting. Uh, there's been some problems with the property that was once a Wendy's, and, but uh, based on the report given by Mr. Rick Foster, it will soon again be a Wendy's. It, it will. We've reached out to the property owners, and they have several Wendy locations, and this is just one that didn't take a priority immediately following the flood, but it has now, and they have submitted actual plans. Blueprints were submitted about two weeks ago. And uh, they're going to totally uh, demo and rebuild it, uh, bring it up proper flood elevation. So it's really going to be the you know the newest uh, newest format that they have, and we're excited about that. So uh, also uh, interesting, and like we said, folks, we're going to be kind of moving through this. Sure. <laughs> yeah. uh, there's going to be some uh, sort of tenant uh, reshuffling going on. Uh, I cannot, it, the development at the corner of Rushing Road and Range Avenue, why can't I remember the name of that? Uh, you know, I, I draw black right now as well. But uh, it, it, With the canes in front. Uh, of course, stage recently closed due to problems uh, stemming from the flood and then COVID-19 on top. Couldn't stay open. Sears has been closed. But now uh, somebody's going to be moving into the Sears location. Somebody's going to be taking over the old Rite Aid location. So tell us a little bit about this uh, sort of musical chairs going on. So uh, speaking to the property manager who is in New York, uh, he has talked to us now about uh, about Renner Center. Uh, is going to move down to the other end where Sears used to be, and then in their old facility where they uh, have, are just now going to vacate, Humana is going to build an office in there. I'm not sure if it's going to be an office uh, type environment for actual uh, you know, medical visits or if it's going to be a sales office. But but Humana is the one in charge. And as a matter of fact, they called yesterday because they're trying to they're trying to move Renner Center out quicker than than originally had. They're ready to get started, so they're they're, they're excited about that. And then in the old uh, uh, let's call that the old K and B, the old Rite Aid location sure. at the very end. I remember end. when it was K and B. That's correct. That's correct. Uh, there's going to be a uh, uh, a tenant called the Purple Cow, and I think they are a reseller of of used uh, clothing and what have you. So. Uh, they've signed a, I think, a three or a five year lease on our program on the, uh, and this is going to be their third store. They have two in batteries already. So, uh, lots coming to to that location. Yes. Any any word on the stage? Uh, what might be taking their spot? Uh, Not yet. As as Rick has had conversations with the property manager, he has somebody interested in it. Okay. But nobody has signed. Gotcha. And 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 speaking of, uh, kind of an interesting development. Uh, some people have noticed that the for sale sign on the old Albertsons building is is uh, uh, either as marked as pending or is no longer there. Um, I know that y'all don't, as you told me before the show started, you don't know until they submit a permit. But uh, 
just I'm throwing that out there as a point of interest for people who might be listening. So moving on, uh, well, hopefully they're listening. Hopefully this isn't <laughs> background noise. Uh, <laughs> um, here's something that I found very interesting moving up Range Avenue. The new Dimco building. Very modern, a lot smaller than the old footprint, built up a little bit. What, what were, that took a while for it, that to happen. It, and I wish I could tell you why it did. I really just don't know. I know John Ware's uh, the realtor that works with them very closely. And uh, it just took Demco a while to to figure out maybe what they wanted. But anyway, as you can see, it's it's definitely elevated. It's got yes. it's got it's up to the, the new elevations that are required. But it does look very nice, and it's going to be a, another great outlet for them. Now I, I'm assuming they probably took over an old building back in the day and had a lot of extra office space in the back. It was a uh, Demco incubator. incubator, so people could utilize it for space if they needed. I'm not sure that they will have that facility. I think it's going to be just a Demco office. Sure. Uh, An an interesting point about that piece of property, uh, you know, obviously it's not going to happen tomorrow, but it it was the intended location uh, for sort of the Denham Springs portion of the Cook Road Extension, correct? And that still could happen. Right. Uh, It's it's definitely on the, uh, uh, it's on my, I hate to even say this, it's the 2047 plan. Right. That's how far out we have to plan these things. And so we've started to allocate uh, time and, and funding in our budget 10 years out now. Uh, to hopefully get to that point to where we can have that road uh, possibly done through DOTD, through the 80-20 match, to try and get some of our long-range plans done. So uh, for those of you who might be like, what what are they talking about? Uh, if you know the layout of Denham Springs, uh, on Pete's Highway, uh, Cook Road hits Pete's Highway, the state is going to widen that to four lanes and take it all the way to Jubin uh, Crossing. The development. To the mall, correct. And so uh, one of the thoughts that the mayor here had was taking it on the Denham Springs side, cutting through those properties and hitting Range Avenue. Uh, so that that's what we were just discussing there is the uh, potentially that that's on the books. It's just it may take a while. Uh, moving on. Uh, excuse me. Yikes. A uh, couple, of, couple of interesting things uh, that I've noticed. A lot of new restaurants coming here uh small most kind of tenants uh more of a tenant size correct uh i know that there have been a couple that came in with bonta del forno uh it, it looks like a couple more will be coming into uh a couple of other develop developments in different parts of uh the city moving up around your area dim springs elementary on track to open next year. It's amazing, isn't it? I mean, oh. that, once everything settled, it, that thing came out of the ground. Well, you gotta you gotta hand it to John Blunt. He's he's quite the uh, he's quite the builder. Seventeen million dollar project, and he is on track. And it, I mean, they're I live right behind it, so I can tell you from my personal perspective, they are working nonstop, and they're just doing what they're supposed to do. Sure, they uh, they their temporary location neighbors of ours here mm-hmm. at the news. Uh, for several years, it'll be we'll be sad to see them go. Right. Uh, you know they've been great neighbors. We had a little bit of a parking tiff the first year, uh, but mostly we worked that out with them, and they've been great neighbors ever since. So it's going to be going to be interesting not to have those guys there anymore. Right. Uh, so also city project, uh, the pavilion is near completion or uh, very close. Very close. Very close. It is. Uh, I would probably say ninety percent complete. Uh, it looks fantastic. Uh, I saw the ceiling fans were installed the other day, and now we're having to order the, uh, the tables and chairs that we're going to, or benches that we're going to have installed, and they're going to be bolted down permanently so they can't be moved around too much. But we're going to leave the space, uh, you know, that's, that's uh, advantageous to most people. Sure. Uh, we'll set up the guidelines as far as being able to call the city clerk and be able to reserve it or, or at least find out if somebody else is out there. But it really looks good. Uh, we acknowledged uh, a young student uh, uh, that uh, submitted the name, so it's going to be called the Municipal Oaks Pavilion. Oh, very cool. So uh, so we recognized her last night. Kaylee was her name. And uh, so we gave her a little uh, certificate, and I think she was a student at the junior high school. Okay. Well, uh, congratulations, Kaylee, on being recognized, and that is a great name. Sure. It's very fitting for that area. <laughs> it really is. I, I do not live far from there. We, we deal with our oak trees. They're great. <laughs> they provide great shade, but uh, and they are big. Anything, uh, anything... Do y'all have any kind of plans for sort of a grand opening on behalf of the city to to open that up? Maybe some sort of event or a ribbon cutting? Or I'm sure we probably will. Uh, and, and City Hall as well. Like Walker has their City Hall grand opening, I think, this, com- this coming Friday, At right? 10 a.m. And, uh, and so we, we want to get to a little bit closer to where we hope to be completed. 
uh, because ours has been in stages. Uh, matter of fact, if you ride by City Hall yesterday, they just installed the poles for the new sign right. that we're going to have out front. So uh, we want to have it mostly complete before we have a ribbon cutting. So I would say just, just wait a little while and we'll let everybody come see. Speaking of, and this will be the last one I'll comment on before, if you want to make any comments, um, you know, the Express OMV at the corner of 190 and mm -hmm. uh, range always stayed very busy. They moved into, and I'm going to date myself with this, the old Blockbuster. That's exactly right. Uh, you know, it was, a, I think, a mattress place for a little while. Mattress, um, mattress firm, I believe, right? Right. After, yeah. uh, I think, the flood kind of ended that. That's correct. Um and that building was open. Uh, I actually had to go in there to return a license plate recently. A uh, very nice facility. It really is. And there's also a lease spot right there next to it. So he, he's going to have a tenant in that uh, vacant building for now. And, uh, and so, you know, these are great, great folks, good people. And, uh, and I don't know what he's going to do with his old location. But just gl glad to see him be able to upgrade because it's nice to see somebody start small and be able to expand his business. Oh, sure. Right? Yeah, and I mean, the, if, if you ever had, first and foremost, I will let you know, I mean, there's some things you can't do there, but boy, it's a lot faster than going to the DMV mm -hmm. uh, out in Livingston. Plus, it's very much, uh, the new facility is great. It's clean. They have more windows. Uh, so uh, I, I do recommend you go check it out. Uh, bring them your business because it's going to be a lot faster and a lot more efficient than yes, the DMV. Exactly. Anything you'd like to add? Before well, we... don't forget now, we have uh, uh, Healing Place Church. The, if you look at the construction on their building, whenever they uh, did the initial remodel in, uh, after the flood, uh, there was two retail spots that were left at the very far end of the building to your left when you're looking at it, and they are currently re remodeling those, and they're going to take them in as classrooms or offices of some sort. So that's, uh, that's, that's nice to see. And First Baptist Church is now building, listen, I'm going to call it their educational building on their new campus off of Pete's Highway. Okay. Uh, from some FEMA funds that they were able to secure after the, after the flood as well. Oh yeah, that is, that's a pretty big project. It was a it was an addition plus there's some construction and behind the facility. Yeah. Something like six or seven million dollars they were able to get. So that's fabulous, and uh, so that's it should be a very nice uh, addition to our uh, to our community as well. And of course they're still working with FEMA on their old location and what what can happen to it. So uh, we'll, we're trying to help guide them on, uh, on on the proper channels to go through and see if we can. Uh, See if they can make them uh, make something happen. Now, uh, for that old location at the corner of Centerville and River Road, uh, you know, tough for them uh, because, at, as a lot of people will note, that's kind of at the bottom of a, a yes. slough almost. Uh, it took a lot of water in that church. Uh, many times. I, many times. Yes, <laughs> many a lot of water. Many times. So, you know, I know when the city worked with LSU Engineering and Architecture, a lot of suggestions about tearing it down, turning it into more of a community space. Uh, so I'm sure that... Uh, that is are... still. That is still the plan. We still, uh, the, uh, the young guys and, and girls from the architecture class had another presentation to us uh, via Zoom uh, just a month ago or so. So there's, there's a lots of ideas out there. So it's just a matter of us being able to secure the property if we can and then secure funding to make whatever improvements we can so that it's more family-friendly, a park-type atmosphere, or a maybe even a water feature to help uh, detain water in the case of rainy days like we've had over the last couple of weeks sure. to help with localized flooding, right? Sure. And then maybe when it's no rain, it, maybe it's a skateboard park, or maybe it's an amphitheater. I mean, there's all kinds of options that are out there. So we, just, let's, let's, we, so we have the seeds been planted for the ideas. Now we just need to secure the property, and then we need to secure the funding. And it's, it's always a slow process. Sometimes it takes time. It just takes time. But, you, you know, if you don't at least try to make the plans and plant the seeds and germinate those uh, uh, over time and make sure that the younger generation that's coming up can carry forth and have the, the, the at least have the ideas of what we thought, what we thought we needed or what we wanted to do. And uh, so that's how we're going to make it, hopefully make it happen. Yeah. Wow. And the old cemetery, there's this old cemetery behind First Baptist Church, and that'll open up an opportunity for us to also go in and maybe have a fundraiser and do something to make that cemetery worthy of it. Look, that thing is hundreds of years old, mm -hmm. and the city took it over decades ago, and we just need to make sure that it's the showplace that it, those folks deserve, because that's our founding, founding fathers for way back when. Right, and, and the Rotary Club went in about four years ago right. and tried to clean up a lot of it. Uh, I know it stayed relatively clean since yes, then. not too bad. Yeah, and, not too bad at all. So being able to secure that uh, would be would be a good thing. So anything uh, anything else you'd like to wrap up with? A lot of good things coming. You know, I think I think the I think the rest of the world is starting to realize how good Denham Springs is. 
And, uh, you know, we, we haven't changed. We still have the family values, the core values of honesty and religion that we have always built our city on or our families on. And so we will continue that path. And, uh, and as these people come on board, you know, we're, we'll welcome them with, a, with open arms, right? Right. So, again, uh, if you will, introduce yourself one last time on the way out. Gerard Landry, the mayor of Denham Springs. The uh, seven and a half square miles of paradise. That's exactly On the west right. side of uh, Livingston <laughs> Paradise. And my name is McHugh David, publisher and editor of the news. Appreciate you guys joining us for another edition. We're trying to, we, we spoke a lot about drainage in the beginning. We're trying to mix it up a little bit. And um, as, as we went over today, I mean, we sped through it. Uh, but there's even more on this list. There's just a lot going on. There is. A lot of, lot of dams starting to break, a lot of new construction. So uh, we appreciate you guys joining us today. Please remember we're on Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, Instagram, and YouTube. We are once a week in print on Thursdays at $7 a month to get that in your mailbox. We're also online, www.livingstonparishnews.com. And you can check these podcasts out on any platform. And, of course, we release them on Facebook as well. We hope you have a great day, and we will see you next time.